This lecture is a brief introduction to national security letters. They're usually called NSLs for short. Same thing. As I hope you recall, federal investigators usually need to get a subpoena from a grand jury. They don't, in general, have administrative subpoena power. Well, NSLs are an exception to that rule. NSLs are administrative subpoenas. They're one of those few areas where federal investigators do have subpoena authority. NSLs are issued by the FBI, and there's no court involved. There are, in fact, five different types of national security letter, covering four different categories of information. Here they are, in chronological order. There's an NSL for financial records, under the Right to Financial Privacy Act. There's another for communications records, under ECPA. The Fair Credit Reporting Act has two different kinds of NSLs, for credit records. And finally, there's authority for financial and credit records in the course of leak investigations. That's under the National Security Act. The vast majority of NSLs are issued under the ECPA NSL authority. So I'm going to focus on ECPA NSLs. Here's what's required for an ECPA NSL. First, there has to be approval by a senior FBI official. And second, there has to be a certification of relevance to a counterterrorism or counterintelligence investigation. That's it. As for the information that's available with an ECPA NSL, it's very similar to the information that's available with a provider subpoena under ECPA. An NSL requires disclosure of a customer's name, their address, their length of service, and their, quote, toll billing records, unquote. The precise meaning of that term isn't settled, but it roughly means a person's telephone calling records. One of two major legal questions under the statute has been, is electronic communications metadata covered by an ECPA NSL? Or is the authority more narrow, only covering traditional phone call records? The FBI's original position on this issue, unsurprisingly, was that it did have the authority. In 2008, the Department of Justice Office of Legal Counsel offered its opinion, and it concluded, on a fairly straightforward reading of the statute, that ECPA NSLs don't cover electronic communications metadata. At about the same time, some major online services reached the same conclusion. They refused to hand over electronic communications metadata in response to an NSL. So, the modern view is that the ECPA NSL authority does not cover electronic communications metadata. Obtaining that information for a national security investigation requires a FISA business records order. Let me highlight the other major legal issue with ECPA NSLs. They impose near-automatic gag orders on communications services. Almost every NSL comes with a complete gag order. At the time of recording, there are several First Amendment challenges to the statute that are working their way through the courts. The objection is that each gag order isn't individually reviewed and approved by a judge. At the direction of Congress, the Department of Justice, Office of the Inspector General, prepared some reports on the FBI's use of its National Security Letter Authority. Those reports weren't pretty. I'd like to note four of the substantial issues that the reports emphasized. First, NSLs were routinely issued with insufficient approval. Second, on a few occasions, the FBI issued NSLs after the FISA court had rejected business record applications. Third, the FBI had a routine practice of issuing so-called exigent letters. Those were requests for information promising an NSL or a grand jury subpoena would be arriving soon. They didn't have too much basis in law. And last, the FBI sometimes issued NSLs 
for additional information not covered by an NSL statute. All of that said, to be fair, the FBI has taken great steps to improve its compliance in the years following the Inspector General reports. I'd like to close with a little data on national security letter requests. There isn't any particular trend in requests that I'd like to highlight, but I'd like you to note the volume of requests. The FBI has made a lot of use of its NSL authority. This is the most commonly used national security surveillance procedure within the United States. In that way, once again, national security letters are a lot like provider subpoenas. The next lecture covers Section 702 of the FISA Amendments Act. It's a remarkably broad surveillance authority, and it's been very controversial.